Okay, guys, I thought I'd show you a um, little project I got to do. This is my South Bend mill, and it's got a strange um, tool holding setup. And it doesn't use a drawbar like a normal, uh, like the bridge port. Most of them use a drawbar from the top and hold the cat the um, R8 or whatever tooling in the, using the drawbar. This one has what they call a uh, Cat 30 or TB30 um, taper, which is a standard taper, but it uses these two set screws on each side to hold the to the work into the uh, the two holder into the mill. I made up this little. Um, it's from a ball joint thing and I milled it a little bit, opened a little bit so I could get it in here and I just kind of put it in here like this and just slight little pop and it gets them out. This taper is the standard CAT30, TB30 taper, but it's this, it's got these pockets in it that hold it in. It doesn't get held in by the drawbar like a normal mill would do. <clears throat> so. You can get these things easy and cut your own pockets in. Very hard to find them with pockets in. I did find a couple. So um, I just bought this one actually from um, Shars and it's got a uh, Jacobs 33 taper on it to hold this um, nice chuck I had. And um, it worked out good. I cut these myself. You can, some of them come, the standard one that comes from South Bend didn't have this this threaded part up on the top it looked like this and this is what came with the machine when you bought it and it's got the uh, the tool different collets that fit in here to hold the tools and I got the setup came with five the standard setup and these are called um, a Z taper double double <laughs> Z double taper collets and they fit in here and they hold the work very well. The problem with these is um, one of them was broken. Oh, and these are available. Guys talk about where you can get these and stuff. These are available. And um, I got this one actually in my hand. I got from um, Universal Dash D Velling. I don't know how to say it, but uh, 50 bucks. So it's a little expensive, but you know, if you need one or two of them, and you have this machine um, it's the perfect setup now one of the problems with these is that they're very they're very limited they can only hold the size that they're meant for you can you know the three-quarter collet you cannot it's not like an ER collet where it's flexible if you put a, a size in here that's not three-quarter you're gonna wreck this thing you tighten it down you're gonna break it or you're gonna bend it and you're not gonna be able to get the regular or the whole mills in there um, so I have a few that came with the machine. One was missing, one was broken actually when I got it. So I bought this one, it was 50 bucks. And I'll put a post, I'll put a link in the bottom um, showing where you can get these. Um, and that's the standard tool holder that came with the machine. And it was, it's pretty good. I use it for a bunch of the tools. I'll hold it in here just so I can loosen it. And what I do is lock the quill so it doesn't spin. And I shut off my thing so I don't forget and turn the machine on. And uh, you loosen it. And there's the... Uh, so this is a carbide bit that I'm going to use. And I'm going to cut the pockets into another setup. I'll show you. Uh, one of the other things about these double tapers is you don't want to put the mill in here and put it in this deep and tighten down. You want to have it in there pretty much most of the way so that it's got something to grab on. It doesn't get bent. That's how these get wrecked. You put them in and not quite all the way and tighten it down. So I'm going to put the carbide mill in there. Okay. 
Okay, that's tight. And I'm going to tighten up the set screws. I like this one because it's ratcheting, so I can get pretty tight with that one. <clears throat> so I bought a couple of tool holders. that didn't have the pockets. This one, for example. So it's a regular, the same thing, the Cat 30 taper, no pockets. I like this because it holds a, a double end to end mill, and um, which this one will not. It's not deep enough. So I can put a, you know, it has the regular set screw to hold it in the, in the flat on them, on the mill. So I'm going to cut pockets in this one. I've got this one, and I've got this one. This is a half inch. It also needs the pockets. I made up this jig to cut the pockets. It's not my idea. I got this from uh, Summer's Metalworks. Had a video up, and he showed this. and He didn't show how to use it, actually, but he showed how to make it and all. It's, a, it's fairly simple. You cut the taper in here. I did that on the lathe and the four jaw. And I cut the taper first. Then I milled down the top. So I made it so that it holds the, the, the um, holder perfect. And then in the bottom, you screw in the bolt and you hold in the, um, the tool holder to, into, the, into this jig. This is a, looks like a metric thread, so I'm going to have to get that. Oop. Yep, metric thread. So what I did was I, I put this in the mill, and I put my centering tool on, onto it and center the spindle over this thing. And I do that for the... Y axis. X doesn't matter because we're going to be moving this thing. But we want this thing to be centered in the Y direction over the jig. Then I put the uh, tool holder in there and snug it up. I'm just using the vise to hold so I can tighten it. And now these are cut on a 45. I've seen a bunch of different ways on the web on how to make these pockets, but this way seems pretty good to me. So what I do is I put this in the in the vise on the 45 and snug it up. And I have it marked F because that the front of it is so that I have it in the same spot as it was when I centered it. Snug up my vise. And now I'll bring in closer. What I do is, oh, I forgot to shut the radio off. So what I do is, I loosen the spindle and I drop it down till it touches my my uh, landing here leave it there and lock the spindle then I lower the table just a couple thousands just so that the mill is not sitting on the bottom anymore it's just off the bottom a good position to cut the first pocket I'm gonna unlock the spindle turn on my uh, VFDs. And we'll see how this goes. Now I'm going to cut 
come in slow. I discovered that coming in with the end here and going straight down is not a good way to do it. Coming in from the side and going across seems to work way better. I wrecked a couple of the uh, end numbers up there. I'm coming in. You can see a little bit of aluminum flying in. Must be off just a smidge. Shouldn't do that. Put the tape below the first. Okay, same thing. I'm gonna bring it under the spindle. I'm gonna lower it down till it touches. Lock the spindle. Lower the table a couple thou, and she's ready to go. Can't get it out of there. It was pretty tight. Guess my taper that's in the block is pretty good.
and now we have the pockets came out pretty good a little bit of uh, file get a little bit of the burrs off and I've got a new tool hold I'm gonna do the other one um, off camera and then we'll try them out looks, looks like it came out very well looks nice as heck and you can see that this tool holder I can put these double-ended nails in here which I have a bunch of and they hold you know it's it's perfect because I can use both sides easily show you it going in lock the spindle Shut off my VFD. Let's loosen up the set screws. Now these set screws are kind of awkward. It's one of the quirks of this particular mill. But to tell you the truth, I had a bridge pour for a while. And I didn't like the drawbar. Loosening up the drawbar on the top of the mill, smacking it with a hammer to break it free, isn't the greatest thing either. So this is not bad, as far as I'm concerned. You can see how this thing holds pretty tight. Pop it free. There's the pockets on the, the South Bend one done by the factory. And there's my pockets. Not a bad setup. It makes this, it makes this mill, you know, you can get tools for this mill that um, you couldn't do without doing this. Let's try this one out. See how she fits. I think we're ready to go. Very nice. I have myself two new tool holders. So I hope any of you guys with a South Bend Mill that might give you some ideas.